Sorry about that. We had a little hiccup. Uh, we just got done doing a training for our core four community, which is part of our performance coach university community um, on the, the topic of mastering the power of focus, the essential skills to either build or break any relationship. And so we started off this training by saying, if you royally wanted to screw up any relationship in your life, friendship, intimate relationship, uh, your team at work, if you really wanted to mess it up, you wanted to end it, destroy it, break it, kill it, crush it. I don't know what words you use. Uh, you get the gist. All you have to do is three things. Number one, focus on everything that's wrong with it. Focus on what you don't like. Focus on what's not working. Focus on what, what you don't appreciate about it. Just focus on everything that's wrong with it. That's step one. Step two, give it a horrible meaning. That means they don't care. That means they're not having my back. That means they're not they're not willing to do it. That means they're a bad person. That means they don't like me. That means whatever you want to make it mean. And then do not, step three is don't appreciate any effort they're putting in. Don't appreciate them, them trying. Don't appreciate them putting in any effort. Don't appreciate any of it. If you do those three things, we just taught our entire community, you can kill any relationship. On the other side, if you want a relationship to work, there's three things you need to practice doing. Number one, focus on what's working. Focus on what is going right. Focus on where you are making progress. Focus on the little tiny things that are working in your favor. Number two, create meanings that are empowering. Whatever meaning you associate to it is how you're gonna experience it. That means they care, that means they're trying. That means they might be horrible at this, but at least they're putting in effort. At least they're showing up. That means they they believe in me. That means they, they're they willing to work at it. That means they're willing to put in the effort. And finally, how you train a goldfish to play soccer was the analogy we used. Appreciate every ounce of effort. Someone asking, thank you for asking. Someone listening, thank you for listening. Someone trying to share their, their thought. Thank you for sharing that with me. Someone acknowledging something you did right. Thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate it so much. If that's all you did was those three things, you have the power in your hands to either make or completely destroy a relationship. Love, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think that you nailed it. I think it's... Um sometimes it's really easy to focus on the things that are missing when your needs aren't fully met. And rather than put that on someone else, maybe it's up to us to fulfill our needs and then try to get to a place where we are more appreciative and focused on the positive instead of what's lacking or what's missing. And um, yeah. Just take more ownership, I guess, of what you have, what you can control instead of what you can't control because you can't control another person. So getting upset because in a relationship, maybe they missed expectations or they didn't meet your needs or something like that. It's really important to still focus on what is going well and create some sort of positive meaning around that because it's, Again, it's easy for us to not see what's going on behind the scenes and all that they're doing. And maybe they didn't or they weren't at capacity to, you know, meet your needs in that moment. But that doesn't mean that they don't care. And it doesn't mean that they wouldn't love to be able to meet your needs. It just means maybe in the moment they they didn't have it in them. They they weren't full themselves, or maybe they had a lot on their plate too. And maybe they actually need exactly what you need in the moment. And neither of you are able to provide that because you both need to do some work to get back to full or to whole or to feeling fulfilled yourself or filled and fueled yourself. So those are some thoughts. One of our coaches in our community called this step radical self-awareness becoming radically aware of what it is you're choosing to focus on, becoming radically self-aware, taking extreme ownership of the meaning you're choosing to give it, and taking extreme ownership and becoming radically self-aware of 
how much appreciation are you, are you sharing with the person who's putting in any ounce of effort? And it's that thought when you can become radically self-aware and have extreme ownership over these three steps, that's where you can move it in the right direction. Um, I threw a quote up here. I grew up hearing this. What's wrong is always available, and so is what's right. At any moment in your life, you can look around in your life, and you can find things that are wrong, things that aren't working, things that aren't right, things that piss you off, things that are upsetting you, uh, the place where the people missed the mark, they didn't get it done on time, they didn't do it, you've been waiting or asking forever. You can find this always, always. This is always available in your life, and so is what's right. So is where they put in the effort, when they showed up a little early, when they tried extra hard, when they did uh, their best, when they, they participated, when they listened, when they cared, when they tried. when So both are always available. The question is, where have you trained your brain to focus? And not at your best. Great point, love. It's not, not when you're uh, you worked out and you had this incredible workout and ice bath and sauna and you're healthy and you had lots of sleep and oh my God, life is blissful and incredible and amazing and like, oh yeah, of course I can focus on the positive. No. Where do you focus when you're getting your ass kicked? Where do you focus when you're overly stressed out, when you're tired, exhausted, when you're worn down, when you haven't slept well, when you haven't eaten, when you're totally burnt out? That's where the area of growth is. When life has royally kicked your ass, you went bankrupt, you're on the verge of divorce, things are falling apart, can you train your brain to focus on what's right with your life? There's a story I grew up hearing from my dad. He said there was this guy, big business tycoon. He had achieved so much. He had accomplished so much. Everything was so great in this person's life. And then all of a sudden, it collapsed. And he went down to the beach and he lost everything. And he was just sitting there staring out into the ocean, wondering what he's going to do with his life. And this homeless guy came walking down the beach and leaned over and said, Sonny, your ship ain't coming. And he goes, excuse me, old man, what'd you say? And he said, your ship ain't coming. There's nothing out there. What are you looking for? And he says, you know, I've lost everything in my life. He said he lost his relationship. He lost all his money. He lost his company. He lost everything he had. Everything he has is gone. He said he had nothing. And the little old guy kind of leaned over and he said, well, can you still see me? And he's like, yeah, I can see you there, old man. He said, can you hear me? He said, yeah, I can hear you. He said, take your hand like this. Hold it up nice and high. Put it on your chest. Is it still beating? He goes, yeah. He goes, great. You, have, you know how many millions of people lose that every day? who can't see anymore, who can't hear anymore, who, whose heart just stops, and that's their last day of life. He goes, you have some of the most critical elements to having the most wildly successful life, but you're so focused on what you're missing that you're missing the opportunity to be grateful for what you have. He goes, yeah, that sounds like it sucks, and he walked away. And the guy just sat there confused. He said, it's amazing. You have everything people dream about, pray about. There's people on their knees praying for another breath in their lungs. There's people on their knees praying that they could see, wishing they could hear, going through surgery after surgery after surgery for the opportunity to be able to possibly see their child's face for the first time in their entire life. And then there's some people sitting around complaining of how it's just not how they want it to be. Comes down to focus. What are you choosing to focus on? We did an exercise that I'm I'm really a fan of. I do this often at events. Uh, I always tease people. I was like, you know, selfie mode, at least it has one purpose. All we did is I said, put your phone in selfie mode, put some music on, stare, you know, they say the windows are the soul. I the what are the eyes are the windows to the soul. Look deep into your own eyes. And can you for five minutes just acknowledge, appreciate, and love the human being you're seeing? So many people, I've watched people look themselves in the mirror and pick their own face apart. Oh my gosh, there's a blemish. Oh my gosh, there's a wrinkle. Oh my gosh, there's a scar. Oh my gosh, what's that? 
Can you look that person in the eyes and just fill them with love and appreciation for three minutes? You have 24 hours. Can you take three minutes and pour into that human being? If you did that every day, I guarantee you'd change your life. You'd treat people, you'd treat yourself differently if you could look yourself in the mirror and see what's right with you instead of what's wrong with you. It's a choice to see that. You'd treat everyone around you differently if you looked at the people around you and asked the question, what do I appreciate about them? What do I love about them? What do I honor about them? What am I grateful for about them? And that's what you chose to focus on every moment of the day. And if that's what you spoke to them, hey, I'm going through something, but I'm so grateful you're here. I'm, I'm honored you take time to listen to me. I'm so grateful that you, you, you try, that you love on me so much. If that's all you did, it changed your entire dynamic of the relationship. Change the dynamic of the relationship with yourself. Change the dynamic of relationship with other people. It would change your entire team dynamic. I was pulling this for a team training we were doing earlier. Watch this. This is a fascinating statistic from Harvard Business Review. They found that high-performing teams, are the colleagues are 72% more likely to praise and appreciate each other. Managers of high-performing teams are 79% more likely to praise and appreciate each other more frequently. And... They themselves, if they're a member of a high-performing team, they're 44% more likely to praise and appreciate each other's time, effort, focus, and energy. Harvard Business Review says basically high-performing teams give and receive appreciation more frequently than low-performing teams. If all you did was practice appreciating yourself and each other more often, it'll increase the overall performance of your team. If your team's not performing at the level you dream, you might want to figure out how to add in more appreciation. Game changer. We have to wrap up to go take care of our little one. Hope you have an amazing morning, evening, afternoon. Share this with someone who needs it. Love, any last words on this one? No, nope, that's all.